Magnetic declination, uh, meridian corrections, uh, more time zones in the south and the north, like right. different, different stuff like that. I guess yeah, my there's system. numerous tools you would you could use to hide distances, especially over water, and then the like, terrestrial distances though would still match because they're all derived from a terrestrial meridian, right? So miles, kilometers, and all that are all derived from the nautical mile, which is derived from a terrestrial meridian. I get what you're saying. So you're all, saying it's, it's, it's all a ratio. Right. All, it's all a ratio of the coordinate system that was derived from the stars, from angles to the stars. So it's going to work out. You're going to be able to use it and verify it. You're Nautical miles are specific, right? They're units of a circle. They're specific to, uh, they only ratioed them to statute miles based on the metric comparison that Alan was talking about, which is the definition of a meter, right? They used to ratio it against a, a terrestrial meridian. And at the conference, they literally said, you know, what, what, what the goal is, they want to reduce it to a length of a quarter of a terrestrial meridian, which, and then they said, oh, it's going to be ratioed against the speed of light, except one over 299,799458 is still the same exact metric of 39.37 uh, inches. So like when you're measuring things in meters, this is ratio to a terrestrial meridian. Terrestrial meridian, by the way, is the thing that is necessitated for a sphere, so. Is that they, they use the stars to somehow like extrapolate like the earth, I think yep. you said? Yep, I mean, I can do a quick rendition if you want. Yeah, no, I, I just want some clarification on that, and then I got a question about it. But I just want to hear it again to make sure I I, I didn't mishear it or misunderstand. Hmm. All right, let's see if I can get better at this. Uh, right, so what do all worldwide maps project? Coordinate systems, not the globe. What do the coordinate systems project? They're based on a datum to tie them to the world. What are datums? Things like spherical datums, right? You have geodesic datums, WGS 84, 83, NAT 27, NAT 83. All of those are spherical datums. That's what ties all the things that are projections to the spherical graticule, which is the gridded network of longitude, latitude, right? Nothing to do with the Earth so far. Now, longitude, latitude, based on the stars. In the old days, it was called cosmography because there's a very real, indistinguishable relationship between stars, lands, and maps, right? For every single point on Earth, there's an equivalent, unique position in the sky. That's how right ascension declination ties to longitude, latitude. There's a direct one-for-one -one correlation. That's how you get ground positions and zeniths from a star. If there wasn't that one-for-one -one correlation, you wouldn't be able to celestially navigate. Now distances between these two coordinate systems and we're talking about geo geographic graticule which is the coordinate system of longitude latitude is determined by nautical miles again which we went over a unit of a circle sky miles navigators minutes one nautical mile one minute of degree 60 minutes uh, one degree one one degree 60 nautical miles right and the power of that is that the distance determined by the nautical mile once ratioed against the statute mile as in the, co the conference that we just went over then is invariant between coordinate systems. So the distances measured in nautical remains consistent no matter the shape of the underlying topography. Again, we haven't actually calculated anything on the Earth. I mean, we've looked at the sky, we've done trig, we've calculated a ground position for that potential star. We haven't measured the ground. We've calculated it on, we've calculated the ground based on the sky, right? So that means whenever we're using nautical miles or the equivalent statute miles, whether the shape of the Earth is a sphere or flat, we're, we're using it based on the stars because we have a geographic radicule derived from angles from the stars and the celestial sphere itself. So we're comparing the celestial sphere to angles from the stars in a one-for-one -one spherical comparison. Anyone with me? Yeah, no, that was, that was, that was excellent, man. That was really good. And if you want to give the quick rendition on Lat Long, dude, this is the craziest story you'll ever hear. Like the amount of effort that was put into this and it's like people are like where's your map it's like yeah dude where's our secret society unlimited funding <laughs> <laughs> the ability yeah. to impose a, a decree where you say hey this is now the coordinate system anyone that uses a different one is fined 30 dollars <laughs> in a time when 30 dollars is like you know a devastating amount of money you <laughs> it's just in it's crazy dude we, we can do the historicity of longitude if you think it'll help yeah, it's always a good it's always a good rundown. I mean, it's crazy. Right. So we have if you look at Wikipedia, longitude was invented, say what, two hundred BC by a dude named Hipparchus, who also invented a variant of a sextant, a distance to the stars, a variant of a sextant. He was taken apart a, a, a form of 
geometry he's accredited with a whole bunch of stuff but fast forward to like 1712 and the board of longitude came about from the royal society and they decreed electing themselves the board of longitude they would you know find the furthest southern extremities of longitude and they needed a device called the chronometer right and this is prop from a prompt from isaac newton who was like no one can create the timepiece that would maintain this at sea to be able to get the furthest reaches of one and then some some craftsman dude who'd never made a clock before in his life came out and met isaac newton's challenge in the public and created the best chronometer that anyone's ever seen and now they'd be able to tell longitude and then they were sent on a on a mission by the board of longitude based on a decree in the almanac of 17 when was america founded 77 76 1777 yep so right about there the yep they had a decree where they would pay everyone like two thousand pounds to go to the furthest southern reaches and map the celestials that, that they see so that they could get the most accurate determination of longitude to a half of a degree right but they already could do that based on navigation methods at sea they had something called the uh, uh the clock stars right they had lunar transit methods and they would say the moon the moon would take a certain amount of time to pass through a star that would give them a corresponding degree of longitude they'd also use something called equinox and base the longitude measurements on that so they don't actually need longitude to be able to navigate anything nobody needs longitude for anything that's just a lie they could get to where they were going within a half of a mile really uh within you know all the thousands of years they can navigate the seas based on latitude based on a, observation of a polaris or the sun and longitude based on equinox and or where they could get um their time component or right ascension component from lunar transit and or jupiter's moons right so they had astronomy methods down to the t to be able to get a component of longitude to determine roughly with their latitude which is just their angle to the sun where they were getting and how they could navigate so the whole story of longitude came from one museum in 2014 issued by the Royal Society from one Winrar dump that was one archive and all the information I just relayed to you came from that one museum. So that's the history of longitude. Should work, right? But then you got to tie it back to a coordinate system. So like if we had just a map of nothing, we could do grid lines of one inch squares, sure. In actuality, the Mercator map as a equal this is a projection actually does preserve directions like that because you can dead reckon. That is the map that you can get on take a ruler draw a direction right. and then dead reckon that direction people try to do that on the azimuth equidistant projection that's absolutely wrong that's the wrong as soon as you put a ruler on that map you're using it wrong the direction is a revolving cylinder around the central cylindrical axes right that's what direction preserving is and that's why the directions match reality or in your case you can say that's how the directions match the globe so if you're taking that projection and you're using it as a with a ruler then the directions are no longer preserved they are corrupted right so that that's not how that works I forgot what i was saying oh the grid lines yeah <laughs> so long the, the mercator map was a longitude latitude it's a spherical reticule but it's spread out in equidistant one inch squares so that you can use it to navigate with dead reckoning that way so like we, we we could make that we could say the mercator map works but it's just tied to the stars everything on our world is tied to the stars man like cosmography was all there was because people understood you can't separate the land from the stars when they would map new stars they would find new land always in that order never the reverse never did they find and, and map new land and like oh look now we have new stars they only had land because they could map the stars and when they the first map ever was a star map on a cave wall dude they'll tell you that on wikipedia then they'll give you a bunch of fake Greeks who knew about longitude and invented everything we needed that sat for 2,000 years, but don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tomography. And they're like, oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to call it cartography, and we're going to make that thing it's a globe, and then we're going to call it cosmo cosmology. No one's going to ever know the difference. If we only knew cosmography as itself, we would never be confused about the maps, right? All maps are linked to the stars. Now, every time we have a discussion, I have to fight so hard. They'd be like, no, it's based on the stars. Everybody knew this 100 years ago. Everybody knew it, right? Currently, we're doing the World War II when they started flying over places. They were using the Mercator and they were like, guys, this is not what the thing says this country would look like. It's way bigger, right? So they had to go correct it. And they were, everyone was freaking out like, oh, is it, has map been lying to us our whole life? Yeah, kind of. Pat, do you guys think this happens like every like every 80 to 100 years when people pick up on what's going like do you think this cycles in and out in and out over millennia after millennia where people think it's flat then they think it's a sphere then they think it's no 100 percent not i think two generations ago everyone on earth knew it was flat and after that they poisoned our minds like you know how the communists take over a country like they don't worry about you they 
They indoctrinate yeah. your children and get you to turn against the parents. So two generations of that, and the kids are having grandkids themselves, and then they've taken over the whole country. Communist ideological subversion works the exact same way, but your great grandparents all knew the earth was flat, dude. There's so much evidence that it was inserted late 1800s to early 1900s. All the G's, Alex Gleason, Samuel Robotham, all wrote their books, 1860 to 1890. And that's when they were like, hmm, all the scientists seem to be thinking that it's spherical for some stupid reason, but we know they're retarded and we're writing these books so everyone can keep it straight. I mean, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but if you read Gleason's book and you read Robotham's book, there's a lot of commentary on science as a whole and they're like, contemporaries and they're like we don't know what the hell's happening but everybody went retarded essentially so then you go to like 1900s and there's schooling there's, there's newspaper clippings there's thousands of newspaper clippings talking about flat earth there's schools teaching flat earth some alongside globe earth there's that ruth video from david weiss that always goes into that that's excellent put all that together and it's like well uh this is a very new deception they inserted it right after this all the history that they told us about that longitude bit that i went into that's 100 percent fake none of that happened I don't think right. any of that's real, right? If it all comes from the Royal Society and it was all inserted after the fact to give us the appearance of a continuous historicity of globularity. What do you guys think about that? 